Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as has already been mentioned, uh, you know, three devastating category four or five uh, huge hurricanes, uh, massive wildfires in the West. Uh, you know, uh, the uh, the earth is changing, and uh, we have to uh, change the way we respond and anticipate uh, these catastrophic events. This bill uh, is a good step forward. Uh, resiliency. Uh, that's the most uh, significant change in this legislation. Uh, when evaluating pre-disaster mitigation projects, FEMA will consider whether the project will increase the level of resiliency and the extent to which state or local government has adopted and is enforcing strong building uh, standards. Uh, this will uh, reduce the risk or increase the resilience to future damage, hardship, loss, or uh, suffering. When FEMA estimates the eligible cost of repairing, restoring, reconstructing, or replacing public facilities or private nonprofit facilities, they will base their estimate on consensus-based building design standards in a resilient uh, manner. Uh, it also uh, changes the uh, pre-disaster mitigation program, which is very important. Uh, we save three to four dollars of uh, disaster costs or flood insurance costs. Uh, for every dollar that we invest in pre-disaster mitigation, we don't do near enough of that. Uh, this bill would help uh, move us in that direction. Uh, FEMA will have to transfer an amount equal to 6% of a, a disaster's cost into their pre-disaster mitigation fund uh, to, uh, because right now the fund uh, receives many more uh, requests than it can fund. This will help begin to address that backlog or that incident or uh, reduce the severity of, of future uh, wildfires. And finally, uh, in one of the disturbing notes of the uh, uh, efforts uh, in uh, Puerto Rico, um, we've had issues about contracting. Uh, in addition to the much publicized uh, whitefish contract, there's another one to, called COBRA, another $200 million no bid, uh, can't look at uh, or audit uh, kind of contract. Uh, and then uh, there is a, uh, there was a, found out recently, there was a $40 million contract for TARPs, uh, which were no delivered. And again, it was a company that had no history of government contracting. I don't know whose crony they were, uh, but we got to get to the bottom of that. So this bill includes provisions to require FEMA to include contract information on its website and notify uh, Congress uh, so we have much more transparency in the future about the contracting uh, uh, activities at FEMA. So I recommend this bill to my colleagues. It's not everything we need to do, but it's a very good start. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, thank the gentleman. Now recognize uh, Ranking Member Johnson.